Hello, friends. This is Market Sound Theory Studio. Hope you're doing well, as always. And I uh, wanted to do a short review today. Um, not much of a review, really more like a walkthrough. This is for the uh, PV Viper Edit software. And uh, think of this as like a companion video to the PV Viper VIP2 review that me and Sean did a little while ago. Um, just to recap, that is, so far anyway, probably my favorite practice amp of all time. Uh, just at the price range, it's just really excellent, has tons of features and everything else. But one thing I said in the video that I didn't like was that the, uh, the knobs and the interface on the amp itself are pretty, uh, pretty difficult to figure out. It's not the kind of amp where you just sit down and you take a look at it and it, it completely makes sense to you. Um, it does take a little bit of figuring out just because some of the knobs do multiple things and if you push them in like a button, then they do another set of things. And it, it you know, it's, it's not overly difficult by any means, but it, it's not exactly user friendly either. So the software, uh, really helps with that. And I want to thank one of my uh, commenters that would watch that video and asked for a, uh, a short review of the uh, the software. I appreciate that comment because if it weren't for that comment, I may have never checked it out. I just never bothered with it since I've owned the amp, but now I've installed it to take a look at it and it's great and I'm gonna start using it. So let's take a look at the desktop here. Now, first thing I should mention is I'm running a Mac computer and uh, I did run into a little bit of problem because the amp's firmware needs to be updated uh, in order to use the software. And it's really strange. I went to the PV website and the Viper Edit software itself is uh, Mac compatible, but the software that you use to update the firmware on the amp seems to me like there was only Windows version. I couldn't find a Mac version anywhere. So maybe I just missed it, but I looked quite a bit. I didn't see anything. So to, uh, to update the... Uh, the firmware, I had to move the amp to a different room where I have a Windows PC. So not a big deal, but just keep it in mind if all you have at home is a Mac, uh, it's, it's, I don't know how you can update the firmware. I think you're gonna have to get your hands on a Windows machine just to get that done. But anyway, uh, the good thing though is that the uh, firmware update did go easily and smoothly, no big deal, um, worked really well. And after that, uh, then you can plug it into your Mac and the edit software itself works great. So let's take a look at that now. So here's the, uh, the main layout. Here's what it looks like. Um, and the first thing you have to do is it asks you what MIDI ports you want to use. So long as you have the VIP amp plugged into your the computer with the USB, uh, there should be an option on here that says Viper USB interface. Just click on that for both options and then hit OK. All right, great. Now you can see that it uh, brought up one of my custom made patches right away. It's called STS Metal, Sound Theory Studio Metal. And uh, this is one that I made in just a few minutes. It was really easy to put together. And uh, one other thing, when I play the amp in this video, you're just gonna be hearing it through the room mic here. Um, I didn't bother to mic the amp. If you wanna hear an actual sound test of the amp, check out our official review. Uh, I'll put a link to that on the screen right now. So here's what the amp sounds like through the room mic. All right, so that's my uh, custom preset that I made. And you can see here, it's just a 6505 emulator. I put a boost on box in front of it, but you have all kinds of options down here. If you click on each, um, can go to what kind of instrument you want to set it up to be, a couple of acoustics, a 12 string, a seven string. Now this isn't exactly, you don't exactly enter what instrument you're playing here. What you enter is what you want to sound like. So if you click on seven string, it actually changes the uh, tuning and the tone to sound like a seven string. Which is pretty cool, uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool feature. And it's a lot easier to change on the software than it is on the amp itself. This makes much more sense. It's laid out in a much better way. So I'll just hit bypass for now because I just want to hear, you know, just this guitar, the way it sounds on its own. For stomp boxes, you click on this. Here's the layout of your stomp boxes. Now, this brings us to the first thing I noticed that's kind of strange. There's a lot of stomp boxes on here that are grayed out. And it took me a long time to figure out why. Like I was like, am I using some sort of demo version or is there something wrong with the software? 
And, uh, you know, I, I, I looked and looked and I don't, I couldn't find anything like that. And finally it dawned on me that the reason some of these are grayed out is because you're supposed to select them from other menus, it looks like. So, for instance, here synth is grayed out here. MOG MOG is grayed out there. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit bypass for now. If you go to the instrument, there's synth right there. So I guess that's how you select it. And then if you go to effect, there's MOG right there. So why is it even in the stomp box section grayed out? Why not just not have it there at all? So I'll be honest with you, I feel like I'm kind of missing something here because that, that just doesn't make any sense. Why would it be set up that way? But everything I have tried has not, I've not been able to ungray out those options. So I think you're supposed to just select them from the other places. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. That's kind of a weird setup if that's the way it is, but hey. Um, and if it is my fault and there is a way to fix that, I apologize, but maybe that's a testament to the software as well, just that you know, I really sat here for a while and could not figure out the problem. Um, but anyway, other than that, it's very quite simple to use. So if you want to use, say, a Tube Screamer effect, go ahead and add it. Um, this does bring me, though, to another thing that I wasn't real crazy about was I was thinking on these stomp boxes, I could just click right here where you would normally hit it with your foot and it would engage and disengage it. But when you click on it, it does nothing. So if you actually want to turn this on and off so you can listen to the difference, Looks to me like the only way you can do that is to click back on the stomp box uh, options, go to bypass, you know, play, go back to the screamer, turn it back on, play again. Okay, so no big deal, really. It's just that it would have been a nice convenience to be able to easily switch it on and off so you can hear the difference. But, you know, this isn't professional, crazy Axe effects, you know, uh, style. Uh, software, you know, this is a very straightforward, easy way to control your amps, so no big deal. All right, so let's take a look at some other options here. So here's all the amps you can choose from. So you know, the, these and these are all the amps that are on the uh, the emulated amps that are on the VIP itself. So it's just a really easy way to get between them. On the on the amp itself, it's a knob with these uh, titles. On the software, you can actually see like you know icons and pictures of the amps. So here's the triple X, for example. And of course, it's really easy to change all the EQs, the pre-gain, the post-gain, etc. So let's say I want to mess with this tone a little bit and, and work on it. Okay, so let's go into that screamer. Let's turn the drive down all the way. Level up a little bit. Okay, back to the amp. A little too much gain. All right, cool. So, you know, really quick, you can start to make differences in the tone and, and get something you like without much trouble at all. Um, another thing I like is the delay and reverb are right here. Um, you know, on the amp, the delay and reverb are a little harder to get to. You have to actually click one of the buttons, click one of the knobs, which then changes what other knobs do. And then you can use the other knobs to change the delay effect, for example. And, uh, you know, as you can tell just from me describing it, it's not the most user-friendly or convenient thing in the world to do. On the software, super, super easy. You just change the knobs here, so I really like that a lot. So let's add a little bit of reverb, a little bit of delay. All right, very good. So let's do a different sound altogether. Let's see if we can get some kind of bluesy sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on like the classic amp. Um, let's turn the tube screamer off. Let's just go without a stomp box this time around. And for the effects, let's see what we got in here. Uh, tremolo, flanger, rotary. Uh, you know, let's just put like a little bit of chorus on it. Just see what happens. So let's turn the depth down. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, so it's not going to be like a true bluesy tone, but let's just play with this and see what we come up with. So back to the class classic amp here. Let's turn the gain down some, just make it a little dirty, but not too much. All right, lows down a little bit. All 
All right, so that sounds pretty cool. So, you know, in just a few seconds there, I was able to make a completely new tone. Very, very easy to use. So in that sense, this is really nice software. Um, and then another thing that you can do as well is now that I've made this custom preset, you can go to the preset name, name it anything you like, and uh, send it to the amp so that it's a, you know, it just stays on the amp as a saved preset. So that's really nice too and very convenient. Now you'll notice here it says demo mode on. This is a very strange thing. So apparently sometimes when you go to the amp menu, some of these will be grayed out and turning demo mode off in the option menu uh, will bring them back, which is a very strange thing. So I'm gonna to toggle demo mode off. Doesn't make any difference for me, but just in case you get the software and you have that trouble, turn demo mode off. Now you go to the stomp box section again, because I thought maybe that would bring those back on, but it didn't. So anyway, just wanted to show you that I did try that. It didn't work. All right, very good. So another thing I'll tell you about this is if you go to the jam section, this is pretty interesting too. So you've got a series of backing tracks that they basically give you for free. It looks like there's eight of them. And then there's an advertisement at the bottom where if you want more backing tracks, you can go to this website. I did go to the website. It looks like they're about a dollar each. Um, and it's kind of nice to have a bunch of jam tracks right here within the software. I'll tell you one thing I don't like though. So let's, go, let's say I go ahead and start one of these jam tracks. Um, I don't know, let's try Solo Blues. Okay, so the backing track sounds really good, very high quality, nothing wrong there. But watch what happens when I'm playing the backing track and then I try to go back to the effects section so that I can try some different effects while I play. It just turns the backing track off. So again, I'm not sure if I'm just missing something here because that is really strange. Seems like, you know, you'd obviously want to be able to go back to the amp settings during the backing track, but it doesn't look like you can. So I suppose the idea is you're supposed to come up with the tone you like first in the gear section, then go to the jam section, start one of the jam tracks, then play over it. So that's fine, but it, you know, it would have been nice if you could mess with your effect settings while you're jamming over the, the track and just try some different things, so. And then as far as the learn feature, you get this uh, message, uh, you have to download, uh, lesson videos from pv.com to use this feature. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm more more interested in just showing you um, basically just the uh, editing software. I'm not too, not too much about all this other stuff. So anyway, there you go. There's a, uh, a little bit of insight into how that works. Um, I recommend getting it. There's no reason not to. If you own the VIP amp, uh, this makes controlling it way easier. It's not perfect, but there it is. I did notice it's version 1.0 which is a little odd because that tells me that they haven't updated it at all and this software is several months old. I don't know if they ever plan to update it. So the small complaints I have may or may not be fixed. I don't know, uh, but they haven't done anything over the last several months. So there you go. If you have any questions, let me know. Just leave a comment and I will uh, respond to it. And uh, hope you have a great one. Thanks for your support as always. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. Really helps me a lot. Many more reviews coming very soon. So we'll see you guys soon and take care. Talk to you later.